Hello, Jeff Williams on board the International Space Station. I'd like to, uh, to address a couple of your questions here. Here's a question from Miami, uh, from Ernie. He writes, when, how, and why the ISS pivots its orbit when the sp space shuttle is visiting the I ISS. In other words, uh, why do the Columbus and the Japanese Kibo modules are on there on the leading edge of the space station as it orbits during normal operations versus being in the trailing edge with the Russian modules leading the station when the shuttle visits the station. Well, the shuttle docks to the space station at the very forward end of the space station. Uh, but because the forward end of the space station is more vulnerable to debris hits from micrometeorite uh, and other uh, debris uh, that's, uh, that's up here in orbit that might possibly hit the station, uh, we, after the docking takes place, after the space shuttle is docked to the space station, we actually rotate the uh, space station shuttle stack around 180 degrees so that the space shuttle is at the back end and the Russian segment or the back end of the space station is actually leading uh, the, in the velocity vector. Uh, so that's to, to add a little bit of uh, protection for the space shuttle uh, to protect its thermal control system uh, for the return to Earth. Here are a couple of questions about the butterflies we had on board. As, as you know, we had uh, uh, eggs that were brought up that hatched into uh, caterpillars. The caterpillars uh, made their chrysalises, and after they uh, spent their time in the chrysalis, they popped out, and uh, they were butterflies, and we had them on board uh, for a while. Uh, the first question is, do you think it was a good idea to bring monarchs to space? And this comes from a fifth grader in Indianapolis. And of course, uh, I think it was a good idea to bring monarchs to space. It's a good idea to bring lots of things uh, to space, to study them, to understand uh, why they work, how they work, uh, uh, to uh, give us insight into the processes, in this case, of life uh, and how gravity impacts it and whatnot, so that we can apply that to, uh, to other things, whether it be uh, astronauts uh, going for a long duration flight out to another planet or to the moon, to Mars, etc. Or perhaps there will be some indirect uh, benefit uh, from uh, these kinds of studies uh, for life on Earth, and there has been uh, much of that in the past. So it's certainly a good idea to study things. Now the monarchs were brought on board primarily as a school project to increase interest among students uh, around the world on uh, science and engineering and space technology and all of that uh, because that interest needs to be fostered uh, because uh, the kids that are in school now are going to be the next generation of scientists and engineers and technicians uh, and that will be very important for the future of the people of all over the world. There's a related question that comes from the same place about the butterflies asking if we were going to let the butterflies fly around the ISS. Well, we wanted to, uh, we and the crew, actually, but unfortunately uh, we couldn't do that. They stayed in their incubator, in their controlled environment, and lived out their lifetime, their normal lifetime, um, and, and died, and they'll be returned to Earth. Uh, but we observed them uh, through a video camera that was installed inside um, and watched as they went through their life cycle. Unfortunately, they, they never did fly around the ISS. All right, we'll talk to you next time.